It's Dr. Mark Kosman of Dr. Mark and Charlie, the video marketing guys, and welcome to Business Spotlight. I had the real pleasure of interviewing Dr. Bill Williams, who is a dentist who's been in practice in the Atlanta, Georgia area for over 40 years, but he's much more than a dentist. He is also a business consultant to dental practices. He is also an author of Marketing the Million Dollar Practice. He hosts a radio show. The man has a lot of talents. You're going to want to hear his story. Well, this is Dr. Mark Kosman of Dr. Mark and Charlie, the video marketing guys. And today on our Business Spotlight interview, we're speaking with Dr. Bill Williams, dentist in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Dr. Williams, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Mark. Glad to be on your show today. And I've been in practice for, gosh, uh, 40 years now. And it's been a great ride. I'm, I'm still at the peak of my uh, profession. I'm enjoying it more than ever. And uh, what we've done has just been it's like a miracle to me that we were able to grow and become uh, such a strong practice. You know, I, I built a practice and sold it and started over again. And the story of how we built it up is, is quite amazing. I, uh, I don't think it's a better time than ever to be in the practice of dentistry. Excellent. Well, let's get a little bit more into that. I mean, you, you're much more than just a dentist. Uh, you know, your background, you do consulting and coaching in dental practice marketing. You're an author, you have a radio show. So there's a lot of ground to cover uh, in, in telling your story. And of course, we want to spend some time talking about the trends that are going on, how the internet has really affected the history of your practice, what you've seen in the in the profession of dentistry as a whole, and then how it's been affecting the way you practice dentistry specifically. So, so tell us a little bit more about uh, you know all of these different things that you do. Okay, Mark. Well, it, it really is a story that has a timeline, and it's very appropriate that we're going to end up talking about video. When well, I was a take general us dentist, it, yeah. starting in 1975. I graduated from the Medical College of Georgia, and I practiced 23 years in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is near Atlanta. And I amassed a good fortune, you know, a good retirement savings, and I, I got to the place where I sold my practice at age 45. I thought I was set. I was going to do pretty much a boutique practice, work part-time, do some high-end cosmetics, and uh, then it all fell apart. What I mean by that is the practice I sold, the guy – had to give it back to me, and I had to go back to practicing in the old town I, you know, was trying to go away from. On top of that, all my investments I'd made with all that money I'd saved up for my retirement plan, it all got taken away by various uh, dot-com busts and internet scams. I mean, it was uh, it was a bad time back in the in the middle '90s for me. You know, you're you're reminding me of that scene in uh, one of the Godfather movies. I was out, and then they pulled me back in. <laughs> it's true. I was out. I had sold. I had made my nest egg, and I was sitting ready to just do what I wanted to do. Well, so they, they pulled you back in, and then what happens? I just built it back up and sold it within about three years and, uh, you know, moved on to the next thing because really the part of town I was in was going bad, the Crime on the streets was bad, and it was just not a good place to practice. And so I was looking for a new place to go, and I moved about 30, 40 miles away to a new town, a suburb of Atlanta, and I started over with no yellow pages. I had no patience, but I had the Internet. I discovered the Internet. I was an early adopter. So I went from zero to $5 million in 10 years. That's incredible. And and where, where are we talking in your timeline at this point? So you're where are you beginning to really see the power of the Internet? Uh, uh, I started having a website in 1997. Okay. And I was my own webmaster for the first five years. So you're a do it yourselfer and you were slogging it out, figuring out how to get all that set up and, and get it to work right for you. Yeah. I learned some of the basics and put them to work. We grew a half a million a year every year for 10 straight years. Now, how, what do you attribute that to? I mean, is that uh, you, you were uh, an early adopter, as you said, you, you, so the web was where you were stepping out in front of any potential competitors? I mean, is that what was evolving there? Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, I grew and was the only practitioner in 1,200 square feet with three staff members, and we grew and grew and eventually went to 3,000 square feet and added an associate dentist with us, and then we kept growing and growing, added another associate, but all during that time, I was doing something called web-centric marketing, which was adding 
all my content from my marketing back pointed toward the web, the website. And we were generating um, thousands and thousands of looks under our website back before any other dentist had a website. Well, that is impressive. And then, of course, uh, you know, eventually the word starts getting around that, uh, you know, we all need to have websites. And so they start popping up uh, around you, but you've got a head start at that point. Um, you know, so what do you see in that era as the, the websites are starting to pop up? What is happening as a trend in dentistry at that point, And how is it then, you know, affecting your practice? Well, like I say, I, I ran the practice for 15 years and um, just built it up, built it up. And uh, I decided to sell it last year and uh, let somebody else run the practice. And I was still working in the practice because that was my ultimate goal anyway, was to build it up and sell it. That was actually one of the biggest hurdles we were able to overcome, that worry that most dentists have about transitioning their practice and cashing out at the end of their career, even though I'm not going to stop practicing. I, I do uh, enjoy the fact that I don't own the practice, and when I'm ready to walk away, I'll be able to. I mean, at 63 years old, to have the freedom to come and go is a good place. So, well, absolutely. Uh, that that flexibility is awesome, and it uh, you know it sounds like you're a pretty savvy businessman to boot. Uh, so, well, I wanted to teach a lot, and I wanted to do consulting and coaching. So, freeing myself up from running the practice was was Plan A, so I could move on to Plan B, which mm-hmm. is teaching, coaching, and you know I'm making as much now as an associate in the practice, working part time as I was when I owned the practice. That's terrific. Now, you're a great person to be chatting with uh, today about this sort of thing because you really watch this whole evolving, changing landscape of the web. So, you know, we go from an era where people had, let's call them static websites. You know, it, it was mostly made up of pages of information. A lot of people were putting up a, the virtual equivalent of the, a brochure and, and information like that. But then we start getting into the whole world of social media and blogs and all that great stuff. So when does that start really showing up uh, for your practice, and, and how does it start to affect you? Well, I, I broke it down into three different areas of what I've seen in the uh, evolution of the web and Internet affecting dental practices. The great. first 10 years that I was involved, 97 to 2007, I called the website era. Okay. Static pages, not too much excitement, but that was still you know, state of the art is to have your before and after pictures. Right. And it was clearly getting you business from what you've been just uh, telling us about. So, yeah. And I think the next five year period, you know, things accelerate as time goes on. And we're in a five year period just ending now called the social media area uh, era. And from 2008 to 2013, particularly, there's been a upswing in marketing using social media. And we've had a presence on Facebook, and LinkedIn and Twitter for over five years. And we've had one year of Pinterest where people contact us through the Pinterest pages. I think the next era though, and we've been involved in the video era for five to six years already, but it's coming to the average practice a lot stronger. A lot of people that were early adopters are now figuring out some advanced techniques. Yeah. And uh, it's all because of bandwidth. You know, our capability now is to put up stuff on the web that we couldn't used to do because of access to the bandwidth. Yeah, you're oh so right. I mean, uh, you know, we've got fiber optics now. I mean, you know, it used to be uh, with a dial-up kind of connection, there was no way you were going to be streaming video the way we can now. And now, of course, we just have the massive explosion of of the sheer volume of content on YouTube and then lots of other video sharing sites. So, you know, throughout your career, you've been clearly that early adopter in all three of these eras. So let's let's talk about this current era. I mean, how how are you watching video evolve? Clearly, you've been in the front line of how it's happening for your practice. But now, what are you doing with video? What do you see other people with doing with, with video? And how is that bringing new new prospects through your doors? Well, we've, we've been doing video features since 2005, where we would hire a production company to come in and do a big deal, record it, edit it, give it back to us. And we would um, host, host it on their site and something like an Amazon S3, and it would be able to be streaming to whoever wanted to download and look at it. Uh, since then time, we've been doing our own video, too, where we would take it and put it up on YouTube or Vimeo. And it became more of a process where it was in-house, although we still use the, the features with a professional company, too. 
but we, we do a lot of uh, self-creation and, and editing of our videos because the technology is coming down with the iPad and some of the uh, software programs. I think people should be using websites as landing pages with video on them because it attracts attention much better than a print. Yeah, most cer- most certainly. And, and we're a TV viewing culture. I mean, so we're we're used to absorbing information in that way. Uh, it feels like work to have to read these days, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I could not agree with you more, obviously. I mean, it's uh, it's where we're at as well in terms of uh, helping people use video. I uh, could not agree with you more about the landing page uh, thing. You, you, you know, people are still catching up, I think, to this uh, this new era. You're seeing a lot more buzz about video right now, certainly in uh, in larger kind of marketing uh, channels on, on the web. But, you know, it's bandwidth. And the other thing I'll throw in there is I, I really think the, the shift to tablets and small screens has an awful lot to do with it as well because, you know, it's a lot harder to read a website on an iPhone uh, on a small screen, but it's still perfectly enjoyable to watch, a uh, you know, a video uh, and get information that way. So... I think that combination has been amazing of watching the bandwidth and watching the the small screen that's in your pocket at all times. I agree. I, I think the first thing I did on video that was of our own production similar to that was a 10 by 10, uh, 10, by 10 campaign where we so, had 10 th- different video messages on 10 different topics. Yep. Okay. And it was like each one was a landing page tied into to a particular message about a particular aspect of dentistry. Yeah, you know, I think that's so so important for people to understand is that, you know, you want to give people a specific answer to the query, the question that they've actually searched for. Uh, it's part of the problem with sending people straight to your main website is that you kind of have too much information there. So if someone's looking for specific information about root canal or veneers or, you know, so they, they don't want to go to a main website and have to kind of sort through to find what they're looking for. That landing page gives them exactly what they want. And then you on the receiving end, when someone passes through one of your landing pages, you know a lot more information about that than just looking at your Google Analytics of your website because now you know that person kind of raised their hand because they came through a specific doorway. You know what they're interested in, so you can now follow up and reply to that person or have an autoresponder campaign that's giving them more information about exactly what they want or making a, a special offer to them about exactly what they want. Much more effective marketing, wouldn't you say? Right, we, we we agree. It's called the emotional hot button that you already know. If they if they come in through a particular link, you don't have to wonder what they're interested in. You already know. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, I think video is only going to get larger now. How would you how would you if you were coaching a dental practice and they are not nearly as tech savvy as you are and have not kind of been the early adopter? Where where would you recommend they start? Our approach has always been to go to experts. If we don't know how to do it ourselves, just hire the right talent. And we've aligned ourselves with all kind of marketing professionals who can do jobs for us. You know, I'm pretty much the idea guy. And I'm, now I don't do the technical stuff too much as far as create the websites, but, but we do have people that know how. Yeah, I got to I got to agree with you there too. I mean, I don't change the oil in my car. I I wouldn't try to uh, change the roof on my house. I mean, I, could I do those things? Of course, but I would have to stop everything else I'm doing to then learn those skills and and devote the time to it. So, there's a certain efficiency to say to a dental practice, "Hey, look, your income comes from the practice of dentistry. Uh you could do all these things yourselves." Uh, as you've said, the uh, the technology has gotten more user friendly and smaller and more affordable, but it requires investing all that time and energy to learn it from scratch. Why not continue to invest in in what you do that generates your income and uh, get people to help you get even more of the that income producing activity through their expertise? So, we're big yeah. believers in outsourcing as well. Yeah, my, the key thing I teach my dentist to do is be efficient and effective. You know, we. Um, we try to teach our clients, the dental clients we talk to, to produce ten to fifteen thousand dollars a day in revenue. And we say you're not supposed to be doing your own website and videos for that because you you can you can hire a real talented video guy to do it. And, and well, you can make it an hour. You can get your whole video done. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, whereas if you're going to do it yourself, I mean, you're going to have to block out several days probably just of uh, trial and error to get it right. So 
Got, got to agree with you there. Well, let me uh, let me sort of put you on the spot about your practice and say, you know, what makes your practice uh, so special? I mean, if I'm out there as a potential, you know, customer, client, uh, you know, patient here, and I'm searching the web and I'm seeing different websites, what would I find about you that would uh, make me jump out and say, wow, you know, uh, I need to check out Dr. Bill Williams' practice? Well, you know, our, the Internet has really impacted our practice a lot, and that's one of the keys that that I always mention is that we've been successful in attracting patients from as far away as Bermuda and London, Kuwait, Australia, all over the United States, and certainly all over Metro Atlanta, which has 5 million people. And uh, so we have a good practice, a good flow of practice for all four dentists. Our focus is really marketing in a number of ways. I mean, we're not just doing what's on the web. Mm-hmm. We're doing direct mail or TV, radio, magazine ads. We're, we're hitting all cylinders. That's one of the keys to marketing is to be available and visible in all places people look. Sure, you want to remove all the barriers of entry. So if someone's... Uh... Looking at their mailbox, uh, you want to be there. If they're looking online, you want to be there as well. Right. And what I want them to see is this, and particularly online, is number one, I want our reviews on the Internet and our testimonials on our own practice website to be stellar and to promote us as the best place to go. And that is one of the places I put all my resources is to focus on getting good reviews and promoting those reviews once they're already on the line. Yeah, you know, they are so important, and I can't tell you how many people in healthcare I've spoken with who don't really realize the importance of those. They, they sort of see, might see them when they do a Google search on their practice or on their name, and they see all these different review sites, and there's nothing on them. And so they're like, eh, you know, I'm getting at least some free uh, website, you know, with my name out there. And it's an eye-opening experience when you start to have that conversation with them and say, you know, that's sitting there waiting for one annoyed uh, person or one person with an axe to grind to go and and really kind of trash your reputation. And I always give people the example of of going out to a restaurant. I mean, restaurants learned uh, about reviews on Yelp and other things uh, much earlier because it was their bread and butter. But, you know, if I go to a restaurant and I have a great meal and I'm satisfied and I got everything that I wanted, my needs are all met. So my motivation to go online and post a review is a lot lower. Whereas if I go out expecting a great meal and I have, you know, a, a bad time and my food is cold and the service is slow, my needs are not all met. So I've kind of got an axe to grind and I'm looking for an outlet for my frustration and along comes a bunch of websites with review uh, information and I'm going to go do that because I, I'm looking for that outlet. So what do you guys do to incentivize, uh, to, to, you know, get the word out to educate your, your happy patients uh, that, you know, it'd be real important for them to post some good information about you? Well, we have about a three-prong approach to that market. One is called a red iPad, and I use that in the practice in a certain way to stimulate patients that are in the office to do a good deed. Oh, excellent. for me having given them a good service. So I just basically ask for referrals through the uh, review process and, and have a way to stimulate them to do that. And when you say a, uh, an iPad, I mean, are, are you literally you literally have an iPad there so they can do it right on the spot? Uh, sort of, yeah. Excellent. That's well, yeah, the strike while the iron is hot, right? Well, that's part of the process, but there is the uh, issue that you don't want all your reviews coming through one IP address. Sure. Right. So we got around that with a different technique. So they're not usually doing it in the office. Okay. But we're using the iPad as the focal point of how to get them to do it. Excellent. Okay. Well, we won't give away your trade secrets. Uh, they have to hire you as a coach and consultant to find out the, the important stuff. But clearly you've got uh, the, the important message for people out there is to be doing something proactive to, uh, you know, to get that information out there because, you know, someone leaves with having had a good experience, but by the time they get home, they're back in the flow of their life. They're not necessarily thinking about you and, and posting a good review about you. So clearly you've got a system and you would recommend to people to have a system to uh, to do that. And they can talk to you about getting a system, it sounds like. Yeah, I do have an article I wrote on my blog of how to use the red iPad effectively so it's available. Excellent. Okay. The we'll give out that information at the end here. We'll give people uh, all the all the contact details about how to get to your blog, get to your website, and and get more information from you. Um, but you have a lot going on, so you know, got a blog, but you are an author as well. You've got uh, uh, your next book, uh, Marketing the Million Dollar Practice. It's heading out to the publisher. I gather it'll be out in about a month or so. So, what's that all about? Well, 
the story of how we got to this place, this uh, $5.8 million practice, is quite a story. It's got a lot of parts to it, and it's put down in the book step-by-step step how we did it. I, I kind of go through the marketing action plan that we developed back in 1997-98 as we grew it, and it was an organic growth. We didn't have any idea we were going to end up a big practice. We just set it in motion, and it had a life of its own. So uh, what I do in the book is I describe the journey. I talk about each marketing technique that I used exactly, and anybody who wants to grow their practice a half million a year, a year, for as long as they want to grow it, can use the same formula. I don't think everybody wants to have a three or four associate practice like I do, but I think if anybody wants to grow to be twice as big and stay the same or add one associate, it's the perfect book for them. Excellent. Well, it sounds like it's going to be uh, an important one for dental practices out there to at least, you know, know the blueprint, know how to do it, whether they want to grow to a certain size or where they want to grow much more exponentially you've got something that they can follow there so we'll give out the details in a second about how they can even pre-order that book uh, sounds like it would be an important one for you dental folk out there to get yeah. um now you do a lot of other things i mean you, you know i'm interviewing you today but uh you know you're no slouch to uh to the world of being interviewed or, or doing the interviews you've got your own radio show tell us about that how does a dentist end up with a radio show well i i, I kind of fell into it by being interviewed and I liked what came out of the interview. And I use the interview. You know, every time you do an interview, you save the audio and use it on your website. That's one of our secrets that I'll easily divulge that that's useful. Yep. It's, uh, it's what content. we're doing right now, right? So it's it's a, uh, an important thing to do. We actually tell people you should record everything all the time when you whenever you're presenting anything. Uh, you should have at least audio. And even better is if you can get a video recording of uh, of yourself speaking. But you know, radio show is a great way to go. So how how did you how did you get into actually creating the show itself? You know, I was interviewed on a local A and radio talk show called Community Profiles here in Atlanta. It's nine twenty talk radio with Lou Whelan. Uh, first time I was on with Jim Moran, the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Gwinnett County, as a you know co-interviewee. Next month, though, I was interviewed by myself for an hour by uh, Lou on his program, just featuring our dental practice and what we're doing with our missions work in Africa. After that, uh, he liked it a lot, and we decided to go on as a sponsor of the show, and, and I got a five-minute segment where I was actually interviewing other people. I was talking about marketing, and I was talking about our dental practice. And so every week I have a five-minute segment where I just ask four or five questions to an interesting person in the community. And it, it kind of breaks up his show so it's not all the same, and it gives a little flair to the community where we have different focuses. So it's a good fit, and uh, we get a lot of people listening you know, it's a, it's a city of 5 million people, and AM Talk Radio is in the top of the market, so it's a good segment to be on. Excellent. Well, you know, an, another tip for people to consider is, uh, you know, get on shows, uh, you know, because obviously, you know, people who are doing interview shows, they need guests, and so uh, often it's a lot easier than people realize to make contact and have uh, a story to tell, and, uh, you know, consider getting into the game yourself and, and creating your own show. And uh, there's a lot of ways that people can do that, either on actual AM radio, on the web. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of avenues for people to to pursue. Well, you know, we've covered a lot of really great information. And as we're kind of, you know, heading towards the, uh, the wrap-up of our time together, I mean, let's talk a little bit about how people can get more uh, information from you because you sound like a pretty awesome resource for people in the dental world to, to know how to get to. So let's start with those basics of, uh, you know, how to get to your main dental practice website. Where do people go for that? Well, we have several um, web addresses that people can get to our website. So I try to meet people where they are. If you're local, you know where Swanee is. So uh, I have the main address called swaneedental.com. And let's spell that for people who don't know how to spell Swanee. S-U-W-A-N-E-E. -E. So swaneedental.com is where they would go for, for that main site. Right. And the main website, you know, has everything. I use AtlantaGentleDental.com also, which goes to the same place. It said. Uh, yeah, much less likely to misspell that one, right? So AtlantaGentleDental.com, right? 
Yeah, that one's easy. If you say it out loud, people can understand it, and they don't have to ask you how to spell it. So that's exactly. another thing about your website name. You need to have something that's easy to write down without having to check spelling. Absolutely. So AtlantaGentleDental.com is pretty easy to remember. Right. And now I mean, I you think, also have, a, 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 I would imagine, a separate area for your consulting and uh, dental practice marketing and coaching. So where do you, where does somebody go for if they want to help, you know, get help to build their own practice? Yeah, all the dentists that I coach, you know, are part of a, a membership site, but I also have a public site, and it's uh, solsticedentaladvisors.com. And solstice is like the summer solstice and the winter solstice, so it's S-O-L-S-T-I-C-E. Yep, so solsticedentaladvisors.com for all you dental folk out there who want to get Dr. Bill Williams on your side uh, and help, uh, you know, follow in his footsteps and build uh, that multi-million dollar practice. It sounds pretty awesome. And now uh, we've talked about your book, and your book is coming out soon, so you're, you know, people can pre-order that, I'm assuming? Yeah, I've got it at the publisher right now, and it's going to be uh, proofed, and then we'll print them by middle of September probably. So very soon, 300-plus uh, pages, uh, a lot of detail, uh, a lot of motivation. But, you know, there's a lot of management and uh, case presentation material in there. That It's not just about marketing, like how you get on the Internet. It's a, it's a good thing about the details of running a dental practice. It's available also you can just email me at bill at solstacedentaladvisors.com. And by the way, the advisors is O-R-S. So plural, yes, advisors. Uh, yep. So again, so if I if I want to put in my order now, because uh, I'm going to forget a month from now, I just send you an email. It's bill at solstacedentaladvisors.com. And again, as uh, as Bill just said, it's solstice, uh, like the summer and fall and so forth. And then advisors, A-D-V-I-S-O-R-S dot com. So Bill at solstice at dental advisors dot com. And you can pre-order that book and uh, get on the list so you don't have to remember later when it actually comes out. Right. And I've got I've got some amazing endorsements from uh, outstanding dentists all across the United States who said this is going to be a game changer for the dental profession. I'm looking forward to seeing if other people can replicate what we've done here. Well, you certainly uh, seem perfectly willing to lay it out for them and give them advice and give them support. And uh, they can take it in book form. They can listen to your show. They can go to your website. They can uh, hire you as a coach and consultant. So there's no excuses, folks out there. So, uh, the eras that we've gone through, the website era, the social media era, and we're now heading into the video era. So it sounds like uh, they can get plenty of help from Dr. Bill Williams. Well, Dr. Bill Williams, it's been a pleasure having you on our show today. Uh, we're going to put lots more information on our blog post that goes with this. So we've got some uh, some information about your background, and we'll put all your links on there as well. So obviously people can uh, visit us at drmarkandcharlie.com, and we'll put all that stuff up there. And uh, it's been great having you. Thank you, Mark. I'm looking forward to working with you guys and sending some folks to you. Just because I know from what you've said today, you know what you're doing. So dentists need places to go to get help. And it uh, sounds like y'all have a product that may be useful. Much appreciated. And yes, uh, like yourself, we're more than happy to help people out. And uh, first place for them to go would be thevideomarketingguys.com. But uh, more to come about that in a couple of minutes. Okay, well, thanks for having me on the show. My pleasure. If you'd like to be our next guest on a Business Spotlight interview, then call us at 866-530-5518 or join us online at drmarkandcharlie.com forward slash interview. Again, that's Dr. Mark with a C and charlie.com forward slash interview or give us a call at 866-530-5518. <music> 